Well, when I became convinced that the uh, universe was process rather than structure, uh, of course I looked at what they call the great chain of being. Here we have uh, animals, vegetables, minerals. That was a start. And then I could see, now that we know about atoms, there must be a kingdom below minerals. And if you take atoms apart, you get particles, so there's a something below atoms. And I was stuck on that for quite a long time. I was trying to find something even simpler than particles. Didn't occur to me at first, but it's light. And the reason is that light can create particles in what's known as pair creation. Uh, creates electrons and creates protons. But uh, light follows it all the way through because all the transactions, all the interactions between particles are what are called photons, that is to say, quanta of light. Uh, the plant feeds on light even the animal eating food. This is all the transactions between molecules that nourish the animal are due to quanta of action. They carry energy. They're not the same as energy. They carry energy. Well, if light was so ubiquitous, ever-present, it would be worthwhile to look into light. And one of the things about light is its complete freedom. If I were to release a photon from my finger at this instant, tick, a second later it would be 186,000 miles away and I wouldn't know what direction. That is what? It's total freedom. So we have this total freedom as a contrast to all this matter behaving according to laws. How do you reconcile these two things? Well, the, the theory of process would say that the, the initial freedom is equivalent to purpose. <laughs> and the purpose invests itself in matter to get something to make itself more effective, to get means to reach its goal. Uh, that's about that gives you an idea of the of the general sweep. Uh, I found later that this uh, whole <laughs> scenario is described in Plato in rather abstract terms, but not as light, but as the universe of being and the universe of becoming with two means in between. But this was a wonderful confirmation of my findings. The universe of being, being free and absolutely without any laws or determinism, but the universe of becoming, being full of laws, otherwise there wouldn't be a change from one thing to another. You wouldn't know the difference between one moment and the next. Becoming is that which changes in time, which grows. So the universe of being has to invest in the universe of becoming to be more than it was. Now that reconciles science and religious teachings. And it helps understand the things in science that are currently so mysterious, these non-objective things things about light and forces and so on, which don't have objectivity. Uh, well, I'm constantly amazed at the ubiquity of light. In yes. fact, when you really think about it, it's the core of our own consciousness. Because we say, when we're pu uh, puzzled about something and we finally uh, see the answer, ah, oh, I see it, or, even though it's not any vision that's involved, you, you see the light. The, 
the aha experience is, is the experience of seeing the light. So if the light is that act of consciousness, you could say, there is a at one moment with the whole of creation because all things that are happening are seeing the light. Uh, is that point about older science considered particles. And then relativity came along and made a great improvement on that by dealing with events. When a particle hits another particle, that's an event, but you can now locate it in time as well as in space. Well, that still isn't it. Because what's happening is not an event. The Civil War, you might say, was an event, but it, that doesn't get to the heart of it. The Civil War was a change of state. It changed our nation from one kind of thing to another. Each point in history, if it's important, is a change of state rather than an event. Now that's what the photon does, is to change the state of an atom. Lifts, lifts it to a higher degree of excitation. <laughs> I think the change of state is, serves to show what's happening. See, rather than describe it as an event, uh, it's, it's in this, this state, and then it's in this state. That uh, is, you can call it an event, but the important sense of when interpreted in terms of cumulativeness, it's like the development in a plot. It moves you to a new plateau. It's what they call quantum jump. <laughs> <laughs>